This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. We're going to talk about how to do a total shoulder with reference to the humeral component selection and preparation. There are a lot of different options as far as the humeral component for a total shoulder. Our goals are to have a system that's adaptable, provides secure fixation, is easy to revise should that become necessary, and preserves as much as possible of the patient's bone. So some of the options include partial resurfacing, a hemi cap, a stemless, a short stem, an end growth, press fit, or a standard stem that is impaction grafted. Let's look at a few of these. This is the partial resurfacing, and you can see that it does just partially resurface the joint and leaves a fair amount of arthritic bone around it. So this is not our, our preference. A hemicap uh, is thought to be a conservative approach. It uh, leaves bone here uh, on the proximal humerus, but that bone makes access to the glenoid difficult. It also sometimes is a problem getting the right length of the humeral neck. And here you can see this shoulder has been pushed way out laterally, what we say overstuffed, by placing the humerus without an adequate bone resection. And then here, sometimes it's difficult to get the hemicap oriented. Here it is tipped down, and here it is tipped to the back. So this is not our favorite choice either. Some people have advocated a stemless humeral component, but again, that's subject to malpositioning and inadequate positioning. A stem uh, that's short uh, has recently gained some popularity, but again, it has problems. If one tries to get fixation by a press fit proximally, that can thin the bone and lead to a periprosthetic fracture, as is shown here. Sometimes uh, it is difficult to fix it, and here, in spite of being cemented, this component got loose. And here's an example of a short stem that it was difficult for the surgeons to get in straight. You can see it has this rather severe angle. Other surgeons uh, are fond of using what's called an ingrowth stem, where uh, the, the proximal end of the body has ingrowth surfaces. That would be here and here. The problem is that, again, that needs to fit tightly in the medullary canal. And sometimes when it's a tight fit, it doesn't seat fully. So here we have the humeral head that's excessively prominent proximally because the distal end of the stem is incarcerated in the humeral diaphysis. If one just goes for a standard press fit stem, once again we have the problem that if it's going to fit tightly down here, the surgeon may have difficulty getting it down all the way. So here's one that didn't quite get put down. Matter of fact, it's about an inch too high. Uh, and that's because the fit down here distally was too tight. <clears throat> for a while, people were coming out with very thin uh, humeral components. One of our fellows called that a junior mint uh, because it's just a very sh small articular surface that really doesn't provide a lot of articular surface area. Some um, bodies are cylindrical, like this one here uh, and this one here, but these are very difficult to fix using impaction grafting, which, you, as you'll see, is our favorite technique for securing the humeral stem in the humeral medullary canal, as shown here. So this is our preferred humeral component and our preferred method of fixation. This is just a simple, standard, smooth stem. You can see it's not too tight down here, so we can seat it all the way. Uh, it is properly positioned within the canal, and we have preserved a lot of the bone stock because all, the only part of the bone that was removed was the arthritic humeral head, and it's fixed in place with impaction grafting using bone that we harvested from the resected humeral head. When we look at the humeral head, prosthesis options, it's important to know that there are several variables. One is the thickness, as shown here. So for a given diameter of curvature, we can have a thin component or a thicker component depending on the tension needed in the soft tissues. We can also vary the diameter of curvature. It can be a, a smaller circle or a larger circle depending on the anatomy 
of the uh, shoulder, but it's important to keep in mind that we have these two independent variables, the thickness and the curvature. We prefer to have the stem of the humeral component on the ball side because if it's here on the humeral body side, it can block access to the glenoid. So our favorite design has the stem for the fixation of the modular head onto the body on the humeral side. Now let's think about how we're going to prepare the humerus. We have now exposed the humerus uh, and revealed what we call the starting point, which is just next to the rotator cuff at the top of the humerus. We hold the arm in 30 degrees of external rotation, as shown here. Then we open the canal using a pine cone burr and enter that canal using various medullary reamers. And we use progressively larger reamers until we just feel it bite distally in the diaphysis, and we call that love at first bite. What we want to avoid is notching the inside of the bone using a reamer that's too large, because what that does is weakens this bone, the prosthesis will stop here, so if the person falls on their arm, this area is at increased risk of fracture. If, as we proceed, we're now going to remove the osteophytes or bone spurs from around the humeral articular surface, and then we're going to plan our cut. And we like to make that cut in everybody at 45 degrees with the long axis of the shaft. So the long axis of the shaft is defined by those reamers that we placed in. And we make the, the cut at 45 degrees, even uh, re irrespective of what the preoperative anatomy is. Some people are concerned about a humerus that looks like it's in varus as shown here, or in valgus as shown here. But we found that in every situation, we can adequately provide a new articular surface with a 45 degree angle cut. Again, the cut is at 45 degrees with the long axis of the shaft, and that long axis is defined by the reamers that we inserted down. We have to keep in mind that the normal humerus is retroverted at about 30 degrees with respect to the uh, angle of the forearm. So if the forearm is straight ahead, the humerus is pointing about 30 degrees back, or if the forearm is rotated uh, 30 degrees out, the humerus is pointing straight to the side. And so that's very important when we make our cut because we want to protect the rotator cuff as shown here. And if the arm gets rotated too much into external rotation, then when the cut is made, it can endanger the rotator cuff, which is a serious problem if it occurs at surgery. So this is what it looks like when that cut is being made. You can see the arthritic humeral head and the cut being made uh, through the humeral head uh, to prepare the bone for the next step of the surgery. Thank you.